all know that North Myrtle Beach is the place to be if you want to experience our state dance, Shag. And we all know that before 1968, the name North Myrtle Beach didn't even exist. But here are some facts I bet you didn't know. I was on the uh, Ocean Drive City Council in the mid-60s, also a member of the JCs, and while I was around the council table, it was in those years that we were dis having discussions with the other uh, towns, uh, uh, Cherry Grove, Crescent, and Windy Hill. And uh, the JCs really, uh, as a group of young fellows, saw the need to not have any duplication of service. Not, we didn't need four police chiefs, we didn't need four fire chiefs, we didn't need four of anything. We just simply need to come together as, as a North Strand community and uh, make this thing work and work better for all of us, you know. And uh, so the city governments, the four city governments, had to first uh, make a choice that that's what we really needed to do and wanted to do. Uh, by doing that, it freed up a great deal of money for advertising and for promotion. And it was sort of the jump start to help us really grow the tourism industry in this area by operating a more efficient local government, consolidated in one. The JCs were sort of split on whether or not they wanted the name to be Palmetto Beach or North Myrtle Beach. I happened to fall out on the side that uh, I felt like at the time, and apparently many others, that uh, over the long haul, we were part of the larger community, the Grand Strand. And I felt like uh, that Myrtle Beach was better known uh, than we were at the marketplace, and we would be better off to call ourselves and name ourselves North Myrtle Beach, which we did by vote, and it carried an overwhelming vote. Uh, I think it, uh, it was the right thing to do then, and I still think it was the right thing to do, and I still think that over the long haul, uh, that as a Grand Strand community, many things we should be doing together now instead of having the turf protection that we uh, sometimes have a tendency to get involved in. But I look at the big picture, and I think that's where our future rests uh, as it relates to a lot of services that we're duplicating now. I got involved in the uh, uh, campaign they had to try to build what became the uh, Conway Bypass. And they were trying to tell the people here that they wanted them to have a, a sales tax and pay for their own highway. And in a place where we didn't think it would be very useful to North Myrtle Beach because it was down south of us, all it did was move the traffic jam a few feet from our door. So they had a group that got together and decided they would bite, vote no on the sales tax and make the state pay for our roads like they had paid everybody else's and tried to come up with a plan for a road system rather than just one piece. And that's where you got the ride uh, word from it was abbreviation for a whole system and it included 31 which is the Conway Bypass 22 joining to 501 and later on down to Burroughs Inlet and uh, we had many very shrewd lobbyists working for the uh, the big wheels and we held a uh, uh, a debate or more like a symposium right over there in that old uh, city hall building in the courtroom, and I was the monitor of the, the thing. We ended up convincing them, although they went ahead with the election, that they would lose. They lost three to one. And then they built the uh, Highway 31, the Carolina Base Parkway. A few views, I'm very proud of that road. <laughs> That's one of those roads that they said, you'll never live to see it finished. Well, I'm still here and it's finished. <laughs> I do remember that my mother had a wood stove in her kitchen and it had a little tank on the side that you heated water because we did not have a bathroom when we moved in our the new house at that time the one I live in now we didn't have daddy built the room but we did not we did not have lights at that time we didn't have electric lights so we st still had uh, kerosene lamps and we heated the water on the on the stove. I'm dating myself now as how old I am. But we, uh, it was not very long before we did, but we had cows and we, so we had our own milk. And I don't, I don't really remember. 
I guess we had ice from somewhere, but I don't remember where. I remember us uh, having jars of pears and peaches and putting them down in the ditch in the cold water to keep them cool. Tie a string around the top of them, blow them down into the ditch. And when they got cool, pull them up out of the ditch. I thought it was a really interesting story. It sort of, sort of talks about the way Marilyn and I worked together. Um, I walked into her office three years ago. And I said, I got an idea I want to talk about. She said, wait a minute, I got an idea too. Okay, what's your idea? I've been approached by Italians to run an Italian festival. I said, oh, that's good. I've been approached by the Irish to run an Irish festival in the fall. Let's put them together. So we came up with an Irish-Italian festival, just like that. And it has turned out to be a great time because we always have it on the, on the last weekend of, of, uh, of um, September. And uh, it's just a great time. And it really has turned out to be a fantastic event. So, and these are also good because one of the things that hasn't happened yet is we haven't really worked out the Main Street area. Was we have the Main Street connector coming in. We have never worked out that as a true downtown area yet. Um, there's so much potential development being talked about, but it's been talked about for years. We've never really been able to get that, that area developed as a place where it should be. I mean, personally, from my standpoint, Main Street for the section down by the, by the um, horseshoe on the ocean should be a, ped a pedestrian only. We should have a big area there so we can have festivals. We should have uh, parking around the sides of it. You know, and just haven't been able to, to get the local business people to, to commit to do something like that. People own the land right now. But that's an idea. And, but in the meantime, it does bring people downtown to the city. And we do have a lot of good businesses down there who, who need the help, and that's good. Well, I was bought the apartment, and they named me Farty. We had one Farty, and they all bought his. And the big farm ain't all the post out there. And then when they were far, we was selling it all. And they had enough water here to come and run. We had the, and had the, uh, I had the first to cut the car to far one time. And we had the five houses on those that weren't on down. And the credit we would have, I heard the two or three more houses burn. They didn't have no fire though. We had a lot of fire back then. When I first moved to the beach in 88, um, some friends of mine taught me how to shag, and so we did. We went out and shagged, and you know, we, we enjoyed, enjoyed several places. There was the pad that's no longer with us anymore. That, that was kind of a a draw for a lot of the people that like to shag and then of course Fat Harold's is still around and then Ducks has kind of changed a little bit but it's still there. Uh, those are the main places I can remember uh, going to shag. Uh, and then of course uh, the, the Spanish Galleon down there too occasionally has a few shagging moments. But uh, there's the shaggers walk of fame down there on Main Street and of course, many, everybody probably knows that that's supposed to be the birthplace of the shag. And so I remember a, a group of business people right there on Main Street getting together and they called themselves the downtown organization interacting together. Maybe you've heard of them. But uh, the, the acronym, do it, everything has to have an acronym, right? So uh, they actually hired our company uh, back in 92 or 93, and we helped develop some of the early on uh, design development drawings for the Main Street District that was used in the construction phase later on. So that was kind of a neat thing to be a part of as a design professional. Having walked these streets for two campaigns now, there is still a Windy Hill, a Crescent Beach, an OD, and a Cherry Grove. They still exist, and, and, and each one of them, each section is very proud of their section. In fact, they want their own little 
names put on their, their little individual areas, their wards. They want each one to be identified. When they're telling someone to come see me, I live in Windy Hill, well, where's that? Or I live in Ocean Drive section, where's that? So they want their signs to indicate their individuality within the whole of the city. And that's a good thing too. I mean, even Vanna White has her little section of the town that she was raised in. And, and she, she lets that be known, so. So as you can see, we're hard at work documenting history for the future North Myrtle Beach Area Historical Museum. And here's one more fact, we need you. Come join us in our effort to preserve North Myrtle Beach Area history.